Hello, this is Amjad al Mandilawi from Baghdad, Iraq, presenting a case of stabilization of a dancing stent. The aim of the presentation is to show how to stabilize a moving stent before deployment. deployment. For the purpose of this presentation, two cases are going to be used. The first case is a 53-year-old male referred for coronary angio due to post-amyangina. He is diabetic, not hypertensive, and non-smoker. During angiography, a middle ID critical lesion was found. This is a epicranial view of the left coronary system. It shows a long stent to be deployed in the middle ID. We can see the stent is moving about 8 to 10 millimeter with each cardiac contraction. This movement would prevent accurate placement of the stent. So what to do? There are several steps that can be used in, when we face such situation. First, you can change the tension on the guide wire, usually by pulling the wire to, leave, to relieve excess tension. You can optimize the guiding position. A parallel wire can, can be used in the hope to immobilize the stent. A longer stent may be used, but this may not be uh, useful in the presence of side the branch that you want you want you don't want to deploy the stent over that branch or you induce a near standstill this can be achieved by two ways using adenosine or rapid ventricular pacing adenosine give you a very short window to deploy the stent and is usually uncomfortable to the patient so we will talk about rapid ventricular pacing Another way is by using Zabo technique, and this is going to be illustrated in another presentation. So in this case, we inserted a transvenous pacemaker and induced rapid ventricular pacing at a rate of 180 per minute. During pacing, we positioned the stent at the desired location and deployed it. And this is the final result. The second case is a 50-year-old male, hypertensive with stable angina and good LV function. This is a picodal view of the left coronary system. The left main system, main stem, is trifurcate, and there is a critical lesion in the proximal LED extending to the ostium. The aim was to predilate and distend the LED with a precise localization of the stent at the ostium. After predilatation, a 3.5 by 18 millimeter drug looting stent used to cover the ostium. We can see the stent is moving about 5 millimeter in and out of the left main stem. If you push the stent, you will miss the ostium. If you pull it, you have to deploy it in the main stem. So we used rapid ventricular pacing at a rate of 160 per minute. And in that way, we were able to immobilize the stent and deploy it at the right location at the ostium of the LED. And this is the result after post dilatation. Rapid ventricular pacing can be achieved using the coronary guide wire itself without inserting a transvenous pacemaker. This can be achieved by placing the cathode, which is the black end or the black crocodile, to the end of the coronary guide wire, and the anode, which is the red one to the needle that is sticked into the subcutaneous tissue after local anesthesia. A higher threshold may be required and you have to make sure that the tip of the guide wire is in a smaller branch. So in conclusion, 
due to cardiac contraction, the stent can move several millimeters with each cardiac cycle. Accurate stent positioning is required, especially in osteal location. Rapid ventricular pacing is safe and is useful to prevent excessive stent movement during deployment. And thank you.